Good afternoon, everyone. This is good. Conversation's good. That means people are having a good time. It means some of you might have snuck in three or four beers, which you shouldn't have. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. My name is Chris Roselli. I work in the Alumni Association here at Western Washington University. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today to celebrate your sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters and neighbors and friends. Um, just a little bit of a, of a, of a pre-welcome to give you an idea as to what's about to happen. So they are outside right now getting their photos taken. The photo is important. We do take the photo, we keep track of those photos, we store them, we pass them on to the students via email later on, but it's really to buy some time so I can chat with you, so that way they have an audience to cheer them on when they walk in. We have about 15,000 students here at Western. Uh, we graduate over 3,000 students a year, and of those 3,000 students, there are 54 departments who pick an outstanding graduate. Uh, there are uh, not every department every year actually selects an outstanding graduate. The bar is high. There were three departments this year who said, you know what, we have outstanding students, but none of them meet our standards of outstanding graduates. So it is a high bar for those students that are selected to be outstanding graduates truly represent the top 1-2% to 2 of our students who are graduating, graduating from Western. It's a true honor to have them here, and you should be very proud of the accomplishments. I'm sure you are. Duh. Um, be very proud of the accomplishments that they have, that they have achieved here in their time at Western. This is our 41st year of celebrating our outstanding graduates, and um, they will be coming in in the next, oh, five minutes or so, so I'm sure uh, as they come in here in the first three rows, uh, that you'll give them the celebratory cheer that they deserve. Thanks for being here. sweating. I haven't worked out that hard in a long time. My wrists are sore. Well, welcome outstanding graduates. You did it. You've done it. Stand up if you've already graduated and you're an outstanding graduate. Stand 
up if you don't graduate until summer. Apparently you're so outstanding that they just have a hunch you're probably going to carry it through. And, <laughs> and then raise your stand up if you're graduating tomorrow. Chris Roselli, I'm the director of Young Alumni and Student Programs here at Western in the Alumni Association, and it is an honor to be here today to stand in front of our most outstanding students. Um, for 41 years, the Association of Western Alumni has been honored to host this ceremony, recognizing our very best students, our best researchers, our best leaders, our best thinkers, our best creators, our best change makers. Your best students. Over the past 41 years, we've been in touch with our outstanding graduates. And we know what they've been doing. They've moved on to create companies. Many of them have sold those companies, created more, and sold them again, providing jobs for thousands. They have become leading researchers in the world's top universities and industries. They've taught in the world's top schools, whether they be elementary schools or middle schools or high schools or universities like Oxford and Stanford and Harvard and Princeton, and of course the best university of them all, we have outstanding graduates teaching right here at Western. They've traveled the world providing years of selfless work for the less fortunate. They've become proven ethical leaders in their businesses, in their communities, in their states, and for their country. They've performed at world-renowned concert halls and opera houses, and they've had their works displayed in museums worldwide. For the past 41 years, Western has graduated outstanding students who have truly benefited our world. Our students have truly impacted our world for the better, and they've changed the world to make it a more positive place. The Outstanding Graduate Award Ceremony doesn't just represent and recognize you as students, though. It also represents the professors who sit next to you. These professors are nationally known for their research and their teaching, and they are highly recognized in their fields, but these professors aren't sitting with you today because of those achievements. They're sitting with you today because they chose to sit with you and help you research and help you do the work that you do. They chose to have their door open for you in their office hours and spend time with you to ensure that you were on the right track if that was the track that you chose. If they're here with you because of the connections that they've offered you and the opportunities that they have provided you, and of course, the wisdom that they have shared with you. So please don't forget, of course, that much of your success here at Western is because of these faculty and because of the opportunities created by Ron the Water here. So the Outstanding Graduate Award. So, um, so I, by the way, I, I apologize. I'm going to open your, your award here. Um, ooh, it's very nice. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Uh, so what it is, it is a crystal globe because of the impact that we know that you are going to make on our society and in this world. It says WWU Outstanding Graduate. You can use it to throw at your bosses in the future. Uh, I don't have a desk at first or have it in your home. It's something that you should so, it is a crystal globe that, that does show how you have benefited our campus and will continue to benefit this planet. We hope you display it proudly. And seeing today's ceremony as the president of Western's Faculty Senate. Of course, she's not only the lead representative of Western's accomplished faculty, but she's also an incredibly popular professor that students love as well. Please welcome our MC for the evening, Professor of Western's Woodring College of Education, Dr. Molly Ware. I was hoping he wasn't going to leave that round globe sitting right here to roll off. He didn't. That's fortunate. Um, really briefly before we get started, I just wanted to say one quick thing, which is, gosh, when you listen to Chris talk about all the incredible things that the graduates here have done and the amazing mentorship 
of the faculty who are here with our graduates, it could also feel like a lot of pressure, this whole idea of, oh my gosh, I've got to go on and change the world. So I just want to say one little thing to you today, which is I hope that today can be an act in stepping into inspiration rather than comparison. And um, a real commitment to, I think the place where we make a difference in the world often doesn't come from our head, it comes from where we completely line up with our strengths and find our place to do that in the world. And I hope that for many of you, that's what you've begun to find here at Western. And so the whole sense of, you know, oh my gosh, you have to make a difference in the world, I think it's just going to happen because you're doing what you love and because you're doing it well. So um, with that, a couple of rules for our 41st annual Outstanding Graduate Awards ceremony today. Um, in the front row, you will see a woman named Sue, who has a sign that says, stop. <laughs> and 30 seconds left. <laughs> that intention for today is that we would like every graduate to have our full presence and energy with them. And if we spend five minutes on the first person, and then we're going to be really tired by the end. So um, every person will have two minutes to share some great things about the graduate that they're here with. Um, if you happen to be two professors and you have one graduate from, uh oh, this is getting confusing. Some people only get one minute. I think you probably know who you are. Do you? you can shake your head if yes. Okay, a couple of you have one student that you're speaking to, and you'll each get about a minute to do that if it's the same student. Um, so one rule of engagement, two minutes. And the sign will appear at 30 seconds, and some music will begin happening. <laughs> Just like the Oscars. Um, also, for those of you with a program, um, we're primarily going to go in order of the program. However, there are a couple of special exceptions, folks who needed to leave early for other events, um, rearranging that we did to make it more convenient for certain faculty. And so I will announce those changes as, as we are bringing folks up to the stage. Um, I'll announce the department, so you might have to flip to a different place in your program. But primarily after the first few, we will be in order. So. And one last thing is just the, how we get to the stage. So folks in the front row, you've got it easy. Congrats. Um, you, uh, student and mentor, you'll come up and just sit back down once you're finished. In the second and third row, we have an on-deck space. And Janine over there is standing in it, and there's also an on-deck space on this side. And so what's going to happen is, for example, the folks at the end would get up, they would come, and at the same time, the folks next to them will get up and wait in the on-deck space. When we have finished the presentation of those who were up here, they will go back and sit back down and we'll add a new uh, pair to the on-deck space. So that will, that will mean we waste less time on transitioning and have more time for um, hearing about the wonderful work that you all have done. So I think we're ready to roll. Okay, so our first graduate, outstanding graduate for this year, comes from the Department of Design, and it is Stefan Atishaya, and the faculty host is Brittany Shade. If you could please come to the front. it was immediately apparent that he had an insatiable thirst for knowledge and throughout his academic career has demonstrated this to his faculty and peers by supplementing his education with his own passion to share wisdoms, participate in dialogue, and request feedback on all matters of design. The proof is in the pudding and by my own calculations, Stefan has spent an estimated 120 hours in my office over the past two years. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me that many of you recognize Stefan because at some point, everyone on this campus has been influenced indirectly by him, either through his advocacy for design thinking, mentorship, campus publications, cross-disciplinary collaborations, or even tomorrow, as he will be delivering this year's CFPA commencement speech. His, <laughs> his dedication, visibility, and attitude have made him a vital member of the design department and an exemplary Western student, and we couldn't be more proud of his achievements. Uh, Stefan's graduation from the BFA program tomorrow is a significant milestone, but his professional career in product design and human-computer interaction, to me, began long ago. 
So the, <clears throat> since a young age, Stefan was always interested in a broad range of creative mediums. He learned about communication and storytelling through photography, a passion which is evident as he typically carries at least three different cameras with him wherever he goes. And he's learned the fundamentals of human interaction and material languages through his background in ceramics. His personal philosophy is that design isn't a job or service, it's a lifestyle. This strategic thinking has allowed him to leverage his background and skills and look at challenges through a macro lens. Stefan's work predominantly focuses on topics including social commentary and shifting cultural paradigms. It has been a privilege to mentor Stefan in his academic years, and I have no doubt that he will one day fulfill his role of design visionary and continue to lead the industry towards a bright and exciting future. Thank you, Stefan, for the contributions you have made and for what I know will be a lifelong friendship. Our next outstanding graduate is Josh Bryant from the Psychology Department, and here with Josh is Stephanie Grimm. Uh, ever since. 
At some point, he decided to come back. Uh, decided this was probably not the best course of uh, advice. Um, and he has been absolutely brilliant ever since. And, and speaking to him about his, his high school experience, there was, uh, there was some talk about it being very challenging. Um, Children's and Children's in place. Um, but I'd like to read some faculty comments uh, about Robert. Um, remarkable ability to look at disparate facts and see the underlying pattern. Brilliant and self-effacing. His questions and contributions would always raise the level of discussion in class. Incredibly hardworking. Generous, always willing to help other students. He has succeeded brilliantly since he decided to step back into an academic career. Um, he's got a near-perfect GPA, um, and in fact, he did so well in our program that at the end of his junior year, we invited him into our graduate program, and he started taking graduate courses. Um, we we're very fortunate that he's going to be with us another year, and we we're very fortunate From the Anthropology Department, our next outstanding graduate is Erin Benson, and her faculty mentor is Sarah Campbell. There was a young student named Benson who aced all her classes and then some. She counted shells by the score, then statisticked them more. I'm grateful to have worked with Ms. Benson. Erin Benson approached me just before her first quarter at Western and told me she had a Presidential Scholar Work Study Award and was looking for a research project to get involved in, either in archaeology or in geology. I'm really grateful that I was able to nab her first, and she ended up being a mainstay of the lab in my NSF project for four years. She not only helped identify and quantify hundreds of thousands of shells, and she did it cheerfully, she was invaluable in database management. She conducted a research project, an independent research project, on the urchin remains, statistically identifying two different species through size measurement of lantern parts and looked at size variation over time for implications for human harvesting pressure. She received an outstanding poster award for this um, research at the Sigma Psi poster comp uh, competition. And then she's since contributed to the project greatly <coughs> by measuring other taxa and figuring out statistical protocols for assessing significance and size trends. She did end up pursuing both of her interests, and I have to share some time with geology. She's graduated with a BS in geology as well as her BA in anthropology, archaeology. She attended field schools in both areas, pursued research projects in both disciplines. We chose her as our outstanding um, student because she did well in a wide range of classes, uh, faculty in different, the very different parts of anthropology. But she's also recognized by geology with a scholarship, a nomination for a USGS internship, and her honors thesis is in geology, advised by Sue Dabari, addressing uh, measuring magma composition changes through clinopyroxene mineral chemistry. And she got an undergraduate research award and another outstanding poster award for this research. She's one of the most focused and self-reliant undergraduates I've ever met. Her organizational skills are impressive. While taking a full load and maintaining a GPA over 3.8, she planned her study and assignment time so well she was completely reliable in her lab hours. Nobody ever does that. Erin uh, <laughs> shared her time with other students as an officer in the Anthro Club and her skills as a peer advisor at the Tutoring Center. And I'm very grateful to have her Our next outstanding graduate is Rebecca Kate Seacrest, and she is from the Art and Art History Department with faculty mentor Kira Jay. I am really proud to be presenting Rebecca Kate, as we know her, Seacrest, as the Department of Arts outstanding graduating senior. Kate is a quiet tour de force. Once you get to know Kate, her quiet disposition is ensued by her dynamic and powerful works of art. She's created large-scale drawings and mixed-media installations that make the viewers stop and take notice. She spends countless hours on her works, creating rich, dynamic pieces that take the viewer by surprise. Kate is a strong and visual thinker. 
She's critical and her works contain a solid intellectual grounding. Kate's work addresses issues of queer identity and issues of representation. By using her experience to make her work, she has been not only brave, but refreshing. She's been an incredible student, a leader, and a role model. She's been an asset to the Department of Art in the Ceramic Search Committee and an advocate for student concerns throughout her time at Western. Kate's always available with the greatest disposition. She's incredibly gracious and helpful. Um, she's been an honor student every year she's been at Western. She's presented a large work, a huge mural-sized drawing that combined diverse themes as part of fall family preview in the Western Gallery. She spent countless hours representing the Department of Art students as a student represent representative. She donated her time to help a class of first grade students experience what working in a university drawing studio environment is like. She's been a participant in Scholars Week for multiple years. She's the multiple recipient of many grants and awards, including the Undergraduate Research Award, multiple years, a Creative Proposal Award, and a College of Fine and Performing Arts grant. Um, she's, finally, she's participated in a collaborative project between art and dance with the local artist, Francie Allen. And if you get a chance, I recommend you go see her work in the Western Gallery with the other uh, Department of Art BFA students. There'll be a reception tomorrow afternoon, 5 to 7, um, after the graduation ceremony, or uh, until June 20, June 12th. Okay. Um, it's been a joy to work with Kate. I've been so much fun working with her all the time she's been here. Congratulations. From the Behavioral Neuroscience Department, our next outstanding graduate is Benjamin Ratcliffe with faculty mentor Janet Finley. I'm a bit of a party crasher. I, uh, I uh, am here to um, honor Ben Ratcliffe as the outstanding graduate in behavioral neuroscience, but this opportunity rightfully belongs to Ben's academic and research advisor, who is Dr. Kelly Jansen, who unfortunately isn't able to attend. Um, and I only had to tackle three other people who were in line for this opportunity when uh, KJ made it available to us. So uh, good for me. So on behalf of KJ, uh, I second, yeah, a round of applause. <laughs> and the other members of the Behavioral Neuroscience Program, I want to just tell you why we've selected Ben for this honor. So. Academics, of course. Ben is graduating from Laude with a Bachelor of Science in Behavioral Neuroscience and also a minor in Communication Studies. And that, of course, is, uh, is commendable in and of its own right. But in addition to this, uh, Ben has maintained an exceptional uh, research and community service uh, while he's been part of uh, the academic program. As a researcher, Ben's been working with Dr. Jansen's uh, Human Cognition and Neural Dynamics Lab. He's been studying how the brain processes infant versus adult phases. And as a result of that work, he's earned himself co-authorship on a paper entitled Spatiotemporal Neural Dynamics of Infant Phase Processing. So my understanding is that paper is currently in press? Uh, it's he's also working on a second paper investigating how the brain coordinates our actions with the environment. The other um, really uh, outstanding aspect of Ben is his level of community service. So he's been an active uh, resident advisor on campus. He's also been an extremely valued advocate for Western and for the Behavioral Neuroscience Program. I know every time I call on him to uh, participate in public events for students, families, visiting scientists, and even politicians, he's always one of the first students to come forward. And last year, Ben spent a month studying rural healthcare delivery in India and Nepal. So for his future plans, Ben intends to serve uh, Teach for America, and he actually leaves tomorrow or the next day for Miami to do that. And then he's going to continue on with graduate studies in neuropsychology. So on behalf of the Behavioral Neuroscience Program, I want to thank you, Ben. <laughs> Oscars have officially 
you go. All right, our next outstanding graduate is from the biology department, and this is Anthony Valente with faculty mentor Joanne Otto. He's never been in one of my classes. So what the heck am I doing up here? Well, there's a reason that I'm here. I recently took over the directorship of the Center for Canadian American Studies. And in doing so, I got to know our majors and uh, what they were up to. And I did a little investigating on Colin. And he fits all the, the bill for being here in terms of GPA and successful courses. Although very back far in your first quarter, you probably should have taken geography with me. But beyond that, uh, Colin has demonstrated uh, a go-gettedness and entrepreneurship uh, that every student uh, we wish would have. Uh, when I came uh, into the lead of the center last year, uh, I was concerned with grants and budgets and staffing and a whole series of things. And we have an academic program and we have students in that academic program uh, and it had kind of gone quiet over the last several years and the student club uh, had gone quiet. And without me asking, Colin went got that club reinvigorated, made it to an AS club once again, and upped its membership to healthy and valuable levels, created uh, programming, well, movie nights, other cultural programming, without any faculty pro uh, prompting or, or, or ask. Uh, then this fall, we had an election in Canada, uh, and we were preparing a kind of a round table academic talk on the election, and I turned to our program manager and I said, Chuck, we probably should have a student event where they watch the, the election happen. And he's like, don't worry, Colin already has it set. He's ordered the food. He's got the AV set up. Uh, so not only a brilliant student uh, who's majoring in a whole series of, of disciplines across the, uh, the campus, but someone who makes the student life and therefore the faculty and staff life of our center uh, vibrant. Uh, and we couldn't do it without the students. And uh, this is the Prime Minister. Prime Minister of Club Canada, uh, and uh, maybe even better looking and more famous than the guy who's been on Vogue magazine and uh, over for dinner with a So, congrats, Paul. So, we're going to skip over chemistry and come back to it a little later. It's a 
will make more sense for the faculty member doing this. And that means our next recipient is from the Chinese Language and Culture Program, as well as the Japanese Program. And the recipient is Mika Jones with faculty mentor Michiko Yusa. Uh, the Outstanding Graduate Award is from the Communications Department. This is Kana Suramanchi with her faculty advisor, Elin Lee. Laura Carney, and I'm presenting this award on behalf of Dr. Elin Lee from 
associate professor in the Department of Communications who worked with Kana in uh, two classes, three independent studies, and an honors thesis during her time at Western. Um, here's what Dr. Lee, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us today, had to say about Kana. So now I'm Dr. Lee. <coughs> Kana Sorimachi has an exceptional high achievement in scholarship. I applaud her commitment and work ethics in raising the profile of research in education and international and cross-cultural communication, contributing to a vibrant, globalized higher education here at Western. In addition to maintaining a 3.89 GPA as an international student, Ms. Sormati's academic achievements exceptionally surpassed many of the local students. Her classroom con contributions were stellar, and I only wish I could have had many more students like her. Outside of the classroom, Ms. Sormachi was an active participant in JSA, ISSS, and AUAP. And here is where I come in, so now I'm me. <laughs> uh, Kana has dedicated her time to volunteering in AUAP classes. And she has, um, these are students who have come from Japan to study. And she has also worked as an international peer advisor, or IPA. One of our rules for our IPAs is that they are to speak English only with the students. For five months, her students were trying to get her to speak Japanese with them. But she told them they will have to wait until the last day. And she pushed them. Well, evidently on the last day, they were lined up outside her door so they could talk to her. And she was a wonderful role. Kana tells me that in the future she hopes to work in an international office in a Japanese university and encourage students to come and study abroad. On behalf of Dr. Lee and the faculty of the Communication Studies and the UAP and fellow students and staff and her parents who are here from Japan, all the rest of us we want to say we're so, so, so proud of you, Kana. And thank you for your contribution here to Western multiculturalism and all uh, the best for the future. Would you join me in congratulations? In addition to all of our faculty's other gifts, they are also shapeshifters who can take on multiple identities at once. It's quite amazing. <laughs> uh, our next recipient is from Communication Sciences and Disorders, and the outstanding graduate from that department is Taylor Gunther with faculty mentor Kimberly Peters. that's speech and audiology. Um, the department chose Taylor because she is hardworking, bright, enthusiastic, optimistic, and a really, really fast runner. <laughs> Taylor has maintained a high cumulative and major GPA at Western while serving as the captain of Western's cross-country and track and field teams. Under Taylor's leadership, the Western cross-country team qualified for the national cross-country meet this year, finishing sixth overall. This is the highest Western has ever placed. Despite the fact that many of the team's stars graduated last year, Taylor referred to this as the ragtag team. Taylor describes this as one of her proudest moments at Western. She herself finished in 26th place for cross country in the U.S., achieving, achieving all-American status while somehow managing to complete about a dozen graduate school applications, um, take her GREs, and ace all of her exams. In addition to being a scholar athlete, Taylor is committed to community engagement. When she's not on the trails, and she's on the trails frequently, I see her run by my house pretty much every day. Um, she spends her days at the Max Higby Center, leading recreational activities with developmentally delayed adults, or at the Wacom Center for Early Learning, supporting children and families in the Birth to Three program. She has also served as a coach and mentor for Girls on the Run, a program that supports young girls in developing positive interpersonal skills and a healthy self-concept through running. Because she wanted to get a taste of what research is like in the social sciences and she seemingly wasn't busy enough, Taylor completed an independent research study on the psychosocial effects of dyslexia on college students. She did so with minimal support and with a smile on her face. Perhaps the thing I enjoy most about Taylor is her attitude as a student and as a person. 
She sees the positive side of everything. She never assumes that things will be handed to her. We feel so fortunate that Taylor accepted a spot in our graduate program for next year. We had 225 applicants, and Taylor was our top pick for 20 spots. We look forward to mentoring Taylor and learning from her as she continues her professional journey of becoming a speech language pathologist. From the Community Health Department, our outstanding graduate this year is Emma Hefton with faculty mentor Ying Lee. I'm actually Senatown, and Dr. Ying Lee and myself are both Emma's mentors, and I am um, representing us both. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a pleasure to hear about so many wonderful students. Emma is also committed to gaining knowledge, and she's committed to her community with a focus on improving health. While working nearly full-time as a caregiver at Catholic Community Services, during Emma's undergraduate career, she has also pursued various impressive community health volunteer opportunities. <clears throat> she has been a peer health educator for alcohol and other drug prevention for Western. In addition, she has volunteered in other community engagement centers across, the, across Bellingham. She is already plays an important role in Bellingham and Western's community health. <clears throat> At the same time, she has dedicated long hours to community outside the classroom. She has produced academic work that is intelligent, critically thought out, and demonstrated her commitment to continued learning. Her work more than met community health <clears throat> faculty's expectations. That said, when her work needed attention and further development, she graciously accepted <coughs> feedback. In fact, one of the attributes that impresses me most about Emma is her grateful and courteous nature, no matter the feedback she receives. Nothing we do as community health faculty seems to go by without grateful recognition and written and verbal communication from Emma. In addition, while Emma has committed herself to the community health major and her community service work, she has also pursued successfully a minor in Spanish. She smartly views community health and Spanish as complementary degrees. She understands that to more deeply understand and explore social ecological determinants of health and health disparities is to more deeply understand and explore other cultures and thus languages. By understanding and speaking Spanish, she will be competent at contributing to a variety of community health programs. In the fall, Emma is 30 seconds. <laughs> In the fall, Emma is and has already been admitted to Bastier's MPH program. This is an excellent fit for Emma, and best is to start the MPH program, which will give Emma an opportunity to contribute to the development. I'm so very proud of Emma, and I'm honored to be here. Our next outstanding graduate is Grace Ermey from the Computer Science Department, and here with her, I think, is Perry Fasano. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I first met Grace uh, when she was a senior in high school because we were recruiting her to take part in the National Science Foundation funded program aimed increasing the representation of women. To select students for this program, we come through hundreds of applications and we uh, end up with a dozen or so students they interview. And my notes from interviewing Grace that day uh, said she had great leadership potential. She had an open mind to learning new things and she had a genuine concern for others. Uh, every interaction I've had with Grace over the years, and there has been many, uh, have only reinforced my first impressions. She's demonstrated her academic ability by earning high grades in her classes. Uh, she's opened her mind and challenged herself by engaging in research projects. She served as a role model to younger students uh, through Creators and Innovators Club and Girls on the Run. And the list goes on and on and on. Grace has been so steady and so strong, so clean, and so humble along the way. Um, last week at our annual end of year computer science picnic, uh, we presented Grace with the Outstanding Graduate Award in front of her peers. And I planned to make a speech, but I started to cry. <laughs> so uh, we joked afterwards that we need a bunch of tissues today to kind of try and hold it together. Um, and I think the only reason I'm not really sobbing is because um, 
I know Grace is going to be around next year finishing her master's degree in computer science, which she started this year as an undergraduate. Um, Gracie, the entire department faculty selected you as our outstanding graduate, but it's me that is honored today to stand here and praise your accomplishments. Uh, you've made a lasting impression on Western and we're better than your presence. We uh, you know what's in the world of you, and uh, I look forward to seeing the impact you made on the world. So our next recipient is Nolan Hop Leonard, and he's not here today because he actually is attending Skidmore College throughout the summer, and they have begun. So he's there on a full scholarship, and as a result, we're going to move on to our Decision Sciences awardee. The outstanding graduate is Joseph Eason, and Craig Tyson is the faculty member here representing him, I believe. My pleasure to introduce Joe as the outstanding student for the Department of Decision Sciences. Uh, Joe graduated in winter quarter and he majored in the area of management information systems and also majored in accounting. Uh, he's really distinguished himself with regard to his academic performance and his leadership and, and his service to our college. Uh, with regard to the academics, Joe is just simply outstanding. Uh, he has had a GPA of 3.97. Um, he got kind of a B-plus in marking. I still don't understand how that happened. <laughs> um, both of his major areas are really rigorous, and so they get that type of uh, academic performance is, is really, really great. But um, when myself and other faculty members think of Joe, you know, it isn't just the, the GPA, it's really the, the way he was in the classroom. He's just a moment of presence, always a great contributor, and uh, he was somebody who always were, were very pleased in our, our, our classroom. Um, at Western, there's a lot of ways that students get involved in leadership and service, and Joe has really been quite a giver to our programs. Um, he was a member of our student information technology leadership team and also uh, executive vice president for our Beta Alpha Psi Accounting Society. And both of those organizations do a lot of activities for our students to support professional career development, and it takes just a lot of time to organize them those types of activities, and, and Joe is just a real uh, leader for, for both of those efforts. Uh, Joe also has uh, served as an accounting leader for our program in our college, and he was a student representative for our leadership lunch program. He capped off his Western experience in March by being our student um, speaker, which was a really terrific honor. On a professional level, uh, Joe was also really busy, so he got the great GPA, did all the service, but he also was doing an internship um, throughout the time he was taking classes, and uh, obviously did really well there. Uh, Joe uh, his last internship with his Symmetra Financial in Bellevue, and um, he now is working full time for Symmetra, and I can imagine they're just as pleased to have Joe as, as, as we were. Uh, in fact, he tells us he really enjoys his job, and he had managed to get a window seat on the ninth floor with views of Lake Washington. We're very proud of Joe, and I'd just like to thank uh, Joe's parents for doing such a good job, and, and Joe's wife for sharing him for the last few years with us. And um, Joe, just congratulations, it's honor. All right, Road 2, we're ready for you. Are you, are you understanding the more advanced lineup sequence we've got going on now? So on deck, folks. Beautiful. Um, our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is from East Asian Studies, Adiara Diabate, and Diane Majors is the faculty mentor. Adiera Diabate, or Maddie, as we call her. When I had her as my student last fall in our TESOL, that's the Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages program, I recognized her academic excellence and commitment to learning at that time. She always lit up the classroom with her smile and eager curiosity. She comes today as the outstanding student in East Asian Studies, which is her major, but I also want to recognize her as an outstanding student in TESOL and an outstanding person. Originally from the Ivory Coast, West Africa, Maddie grew up with French as her first language, but she's been in the United States for about 11 years and she knows firsthand what it's like to be an English learner. As far as languages go in her major, she focused on Korean. 
And during her time here at Western, she was able to spend an academic year in Korea, learning the language and taking classes there. In addition to French, English, and Korean, she has been studying Mandarin Chinese and Mongolian. She says her language learning experience has allowed her to be more understanding and patient with the English learners that she works with. It also motivates her to think of and employ effective teaching methods for her learners based on her experiences. I asked her practicum teacher and her supervisor how they would describe Maddie. Her mentor teacher said Maddie is very humble, that she isn't even aware of how good a teacher she is. In her words, Maddie is a natural. Her supervisor noted that Maddie gave an excellent lesson on global issues relating the topic to both her own and her students' countries. She said Maddie is already a strong and passionate teacher who will build on these skills as she pursues this calling. Maddie has experienced many cultures and she says she realizes the importance of respecting her students, their backgrounds, and their work. We wish you the best, Maddie, as you pursue graduate work in teaching English to others. You are truly outstanding. Our next recipient is from the Economics Department. The outstanding graduate is Megan Demeter, and Diane Rearley, I believe, is the faculty member. Hi, I'm actually Sharon Shoemake. Um, <laughs> I'm the faculty member. Um, I'm not trying to be Diane Rearley. Um, often in economics, we don't see our best students in office hours. The students that to office hours and the ones that need help. And it's a tragedy that we don't always see the ones that are excelling in our class. And Megan was one of those students. Um, she took my environmental economics class and she did really well, but I didn't actually get to know her until later when she was the head of the Women in Energy Mentoring Network. The Women in Energy Mentoring Network um, involves women from positions in the community and positions in the indus energy industry, a typically very male-dominated industry, and 7 a.m. meetings. So it's networking, networking and 7 a.m., two things that, you know, make me anxious. Um, <laughs> Megan made it worthwhile. She um, conducted the meetings with poise and charm um, and a great sense of professionality. Um, she finished, of course, um, with an outstanding GPA in environmental economics and a double major in environmental economics in French and a minor in energy policy. And if you look at her resume, you see that she truly made the best most of her time here at Western. Um, I'm not going to go over the entire thing. We recently had our departmental barbecue, and our department chair went over the entire thing. It's embarrassing, Megan, so I'm not. <laughs> I'll find new ways of embarrassing you. Um, but if you look at it, you'll see a very varied resume with all sorts of interesting activities, including working with a tutoring center, writing a paper that could potentially be published um, <laughs> on carbon financing and almost becoming, as I just learned, a certified kickboxing instructor. Um, <laughs> She's going on to great things. Her next movement is to um, get a master's degree at George Washington University in DC, and I'm really looking forward to her being a great representative of all that Western stands for and what our students can accomplish. So faculty, when you come up, we're going to ask that you really intentionally speak into the microphone because it's a little hard for some folks in the back to hear. So if you could do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award comes from Electrical Engineering. Victor Perez is the recipient, and he is here with faculty mentor Todd Morton. Pleasure to introduce our first outstanding graduate of the electrical engineering program, Victor Perez. Um, he is also minoring in math and in Spanish. And I have this things that he's done. Uh, besides being the best GPA, he's a member of uh, IEEE, the Kappa Nu Honor Society. He was our chair of our student chapter in IEEE. He's been a research assistant, lab assistant, and he's a member of the uh, Society of Women Engineers. Um, and I just found out today from Grandma and Grandpa, he's the king of good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> um, most of all, I, 
Victor is just a joy to have in the life. And he is going to be moving on here soon in a couple weeks to the Packard Technical Center. And I know that their labs and their offices, the decibel level just went up. <laughs> and it's going to be a pleasure for them to be working with Victor as it is and for us. So thank you, Victor, for choosing us. The next outstanding graduate is Madeline Leibolt. She's from the Department of Elementary Education, and she's here with Joanne Carney, her faculty mentor. It's all well and good to say we should speak into the microphone, but it wasn't set up for short people. <laughs> you could take it out. I think it comes out. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. okay. I have a question to begin. How many of you can think of a special elementary or middle school teacher who really had a positive impact on your life. Look at that. Nearly every hand in this audience went up. Madeline Leibold, our outstanding graduate, will be that kind of teacher. And so you know what a difference it makes to be a good elementary teacher. Madeline is graduating with a certification as an elementary teacher and a special endorsement as a highly qualified science educator. Just what we need, more students who are well prepared in elementary and middle school for STEM areas. And that's Madeline's forte. Madeline has done exemplary work throughout our program and demonstrated the highest standards of professional practice. She did her three-quarter internship and entire academic year at Roosevelt Elementary School in Bellingham, which is a school with a high number of English language learners and high poverty me uh, measures. She did exemplary teaching there at the school and engaged sensitively um, with parents. Her colleagues have commended her, by her colleagues, I mean the teachers and administrators at Roosevelt have commended her for all the contributions she has made to their collaborative professional learning as well. I'd like to uh, read some of the things that those educators at Roosevelt said about Madeline. The principal, Tom Grisham, Madeline's greatest strengths are her quality of instruction, ability to implement and analyze a variety of assessments, and her reflective nature. In her instruction, Madeline employs a highly organized structure with clear learning goals and expectations. She has already proven to be a very professional, dedicated, and skilled educator who would be an asset to any school. Stop? Oh my goodness, how did that happen? <laughs> Madeline, we are proud of you and proud of the work that you will do in working with children. You benefit our entire society. Okay, so Joanne was a very good model of what to do with the microphone, but I think I figured out one more trick that will help us. Outstanding graduate, if you stand a little forward instead of back, then the faculty mentor doesn't have to look backwards to look at you, which they want to do. So, our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is from Engineering and Design. That is Jolie Niebert, and Jason Morris is the faculty member. It's my honor to present to you Julie Niebuhr. She's the outstanding graduate for the Industrial Design Program. And she has grown from being an excellent student and is becoming an amazing professional. She was raising the bar for her classmates during her sophomore and junior years, uh, exhibiting academic excellence in other ways. Then she was selected for an internship at GE Appliances where she worked full-time as part of the design team. 
designing two products that have come to the market since. Then she designed a beautiful micro kitchen for a competition, and among 80 international entries, she won grand prize and $2,500. Then the same design was given the grand prize for innovation in a small space living in New York City Big Apps competition, where she was awarded round trip expenses to New York City to present her work and was featured in the Seattle and New York Times. And after her time at GE, she went to Austin, Texas, worked on a creative team at Argo to explore the role of future technologies in an office environment. So that led to being approached by a French startup company, Adoc, to work on industrial design, visual product identity, and user experience design for their new augmented reality product. After graduation, she heads to Paris to complete her work with Adobe. Truly outstanding, Julie. Thank you. Our next outstanding graduate is Kyle White from Manufacturing Engineering. He's here with faculty mentor Derek Yipoy. It's a real pleasure to be here with Kyle um, as our outstanding senior in manufacturing engineering. Um, I'd like to point out that Kyle is not just the best in class, he's also the first in what we hope will be an illustrious lineage of outstanding graduates in the manufacturing engineering program. This is our first senior class that we're graduating. Um, Kyle's accomplishments in the classroom are exceptional. Uh, to place this in a proper context, I point out that we are we're privileged to have a really outstanding group of students for our first class. And Kyle's academic performance placed him among the, the top um, students. Uh, my first impressions of him as a teacher were of a strongly motivated student with a great eagerness and capacity to learn. I also quickly discovered that in the truest traditions of our department, he had the ability to take his knowledge and apply it um, within a practical setting. Um, one example of this is his involvement with the Western's Formula SAE racing team. Uh, this team has a proud tradition of competing at a high level of excellence in the annual Formula SAE competition. Many of the components of the racing car are fabricated in-house by our students, and Kyle, with his manufacturing experience, took the lead in designing and machining many of these uh, complex components, directly using the knowledge that he had acquired in his classes. Uh, beyond just academic and technical abilities, Kyle has demonstrated the ability to lead and be a key player on teams. Um, he's not the most outspoken student, but his opinions are highly sought by his peers. Uh, the respect that they have for him means that he's often the go-to person when the class is stuck on something. Not a bad reputation for an engineer. <laughs> um, over the past year, he's been competing, uh, while he's been competing in studies, Kyle has also found somehow the time to be an intern at Pexel Corporation in Burlington. Um, they are a leading manufacturer of aerospace components in the region, and the supervisor there has the highest regard for his abilities. He talks of his great enthusiasm for challenging projects uh, that involve critical thinking and creativity to solve, and also his eagerness to learn. So it's my great pleasure to, um, to acknowledge Kyle as really the creme, the creme of our new engineering program. And on behalf of the faculty, I express my pride by acknowledging you as our outstanding graduate. All right, our next outstanding graduate is from the English department, Ryan Ray, and she's here with faculty mentor Chris Lohr. Pleasure to be here today. It's a great honor to introduce Rena Ray, English Department's outstanding graduate. Um, I think the most important thing that you all should know about Rena, and for Rena, for you to know as well, is that she changes the people who come into contact with her. I was talking with uh, one of my colleagues the other day in the way that you talk about uh, your best students with your colleagues, uh, and she and asked her. You know, we were just discussing her. And she said, "You know, a student with Rena's gifts makes a mark on everyone she comes into contact with." And I thought this was. 
really profoundly true, so I decided to steal it. Um, and it's not just because, this is not just because of Rena's scholarship. The first time I met her was in a, a class uh, for a seminar she took with me a couple of years ago. Um, I was teaching a new class for the first time. I developed this uh, replacement for my category of participation, which I I decided I didn't like that term anymore, so I developed this term intellectual community, which I was very proud of, and I could just sort of mention it and gloss over it. Um, but uh, uh, Rena had a lot of questions about this term, uh, and actually led us in a really interesting and productive 20 to 30 minute conversation about what it means to have an intellectual community, what it means to be in a community with other people, what it means to do intellectual work together, uh, and really transformed for me the experience of, of what a first day of class can do. So. Um, it's a, and she also grilled me pretty hard along the way, which is also something I've gotten used to in, in having her in class. Um, so this, this, this habit that Rina has of asking questions uh, and of probing is part of what makes her really distinctive. It's part of what changes people who come into contact with her. You know, she's always forcing us to rethink our assumptions. Oh, I only have 30 seconds left. Okay. Um, okay. So I got to know Rina, this, I, I got to know Rina over the last couple of years, and I got to know a sharp, fearless, and passionate student who challenges us, challenges uh, the people that come into contact with her, as I said, challenged me to think in new ways about the philosophical literary questions she was raising related to animals. Um, her academic passion also got me to think about the ways that uh, passion and scholarship and an active spirit can come together. So congratulations, Rina, for everything that you've accomplished here. You're one of the most gifted students to come through our department in recent memory, and you won't be quickly forgotten. You've touched all of your instructors here. And remember that wherever you end up, graduate school or someplace else, um, your gifts are going to move and change the people around you. So keep on changing us, keep pushing us in new directions. The world is going to be a better place for it. All right, our next outstanding graduate is Chris Trenise, and he is from the Environmental Science Department. Andy Bunn is here with him as his faculty mentor. So, thank you all very much. Before I introduce Chris, I would like to introduce how I met Chris, which was through his kids. Kids, Diego, you get brothers, all stand up. Stand up, guys. I met Chris because I met these guys first. I was their chess coach. And I was coaching them in chess, and then this very serious guy would come and pick them up from chess. And uh, he would sign them out, and then he'd go away, and I didn't know him. And then a year later, he showed up in my classroom, and I got to meet their dad, uh, Chris. So Chris is an environmental science student. He's graduated with 4.0. He has been driving a FedEx truck, raising three kids, while his wife, who is also incredibly supportive, is working full time and going through all the prereqs to get a nursing degree. Chris is the kind of guy that makes you feel like you should probably budget your time a little better. <laughs> uh, he's an absolutely amazing guy. He's the student that would sit in the class, and after he took one of my classes, I realized I no longer had to write the uh, answer key for the exams, so I would just pull Chris's out and put it on the top. Uh, never got anything wrong. Incredibly wonderful guy to have in class and I've been able to talk him into staying. He's gonna be staying next year in graduate school and work in my lab. Uh, he's working for the Forest Service now and he's gonna go on to a wonderful career. And he's done it through hard work and perseverance and with the support of his fantastic family. You guys should be very proud of the dad. So thank you. Patrick Hutchins is the outstanding graduate from environmental studies. He's here with Nick Stanger, his faculty mentor. So it's a total honor to stand with you here, Patrick. And uh, Patrick just is graduating his master's, uh, or his undergrad in uh, major in uh, environmental education. And I'm sort of standing here with two other hats as well. And those hats are actually the other professors who are in the environmental education uh, program within Huxley's College Environmental Studies. And that's Gene Myers and Wendy Walker. And uh, we're all here to congratulate you in a way. Um, uh, but I've also noticed you've been spreading your wings and just trying out other courses within environmental studies. And I was in the hall the other day and I was talking to one of my colleagues who happens to be teaching Patrick right now. I'm like, do you have Patrick in your class? <laughs> yeah. That must be awesome, because Patrick has this crazy, voracious uh, appetite for 
from learning. And he also has this incredible marine ecology background. And he actually left a job that was likely going to launch him into a career at the Seattle Aquarium uh, to come back and finish his undergrad. And I think that in a, alone speaks uh, to the volumes of his gracious ap uh, uh, aptitude, really, in, in learning and teaching. And Patrick, you're really great as a teacher. And it comes across when your, your uh, excitement and uh, understanding and knowledge about ecology translates these super complex things to, to uh, something that's edible and, and able to be taken by young and old and uh, all sorts of people. So I really congratulate you on this uh, award and, and uh, all of us in the department are really excited about it. So well done. Our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award comes from Finance and Marketing. This is Jake Engelbert, and Nick Wonder is his faculty mentor. Jake Engelbert will graduate tomorrow uh, with a concentration in finance and a minor in economics. We'll start with the raw data. Uh, Jake. Jake uh, has a 3.96 overall GPA in the program that is sparing with the A's. He took a course from me last spring and accumulated 14% more points than the second highest student in the class of 20, which uh, doesn't happen often. Uh, so he was strong across the board, uh, quantitative skills, Excel, grasping theoretical concepts, uh, communicating and writing and contributing to class discussions. He's, he's well liked by his peers, he plays well with others. And, um, outside the class, uh, Jake has uh, produced a, an awesome website uh, for the student finance group. He's interned as a commercial development uh, financial analyst, and more recently, he's been working on uh, demanding Argus, uh, Argus real estate software certification program. He's obtained his Washington State uh, Commercial Appraiser Trainee License and has secured a job uh, as a Commercial Real Estate uh, Appraiser Trainee in Bellevue. And uh, we're sure that his future is bright and uh, hope that he comes back to visit uh, often. Our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is Maya Price, and this is for both the French Department and the Management Business Administration Department. And we'll have two faculty, oh yes, joining us, Edward Ursuline and Tom Roll, and you get two minutes total. Maya told me earlier she was nervous about people talking about her, so you don't get two minutes each, two minutes total. Two minutes total, that's not fair. We should have four. Yes, there are two of us here because my price is the outstanding graduate in both French and international business. So this is uh, something exceptional, but I'll mention in passing that Megan Demetter, who was um, a graduate, uh, outstanding graduate in economics, is also a French major. So we have an abundance of great students in French, and French is the way to go. <laughs> I think the reason that Maya Price has been so successful in her studies is not just because she's smart and hardworking, not just because she did a French uh, study abroad for a year, not just because she went to Togo for a month, but because she has a sort of intellectual curiosity that allows her to link different research areas. Uh, for example, um, when I was teaching uh, 18th century French Enlightenment authors, she asked questions about uh, a British author, Adam, Adam Smith, and his famous The Wealth of Nations, published, ooh, stop. Okay, <laughs> that quick, okay, one minute, okay. Well, she, she's a great student, and we're glad to have her, and she might be doing a stint in um, the Peace Corps, and later on in um, a international MBA, but um, my esteemed colleague Tom Rail will have more to say about that. I want to talk about integration and attention, two things that West really 
Midwestern students do, and that's, I'm going to give Maya that's a really example of somebody who does that. At the end of her study year in France, she took the adventure of an internship uh, at the register of her neighborhood bakery. She persuaded all of them, the demanding clientele, and a boss, by the way, that she could describe all the varieties of French bread and pastries. Uh, so adventure was in Her, her uh, senior capstone project with Dairy Gold was an idea of integration. Uh, it needed to take a look at a really difficult project that Dairy Gold was facing of trying to figure out what to do with a, a variety of new challengers from the EU uh, in dairy. At the same time, the Russians have stopped us from selling any products into the country. Now, this is an impossible project. Nobody would ever take this on. But uh, <laughs> Maya said, Maya, this is the perfect way for Maya to finish off her, uh, her year. Uh, they, uh, there were no simple answers, but uh, this is the way that she took it out. They did all the data analysis, of course, all the business school side of things. But they also uh, did the regulatory issue, political science, other things back to integration. They even had to figure out uh, whether we were going to do uh, uh, births of dairy cows and call biology, maybe. Anyway, through all the challenges and the frustrations of this project, uh, Maya kept her sense of humor. Uh, after an especially cont uh, contentious meeting, uh, she said, thanks a ton. I'm entering time, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't resist trying to give back and play off of that, because I have a present for her. Uh, because I want to say to her, thanks a ton. Next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award comes from the Geology Department. We have Michael Reynolds, and with him is his faculty mentor, Melissa Rice. Michael approached me last year with an interest in doing research in planetary science. And so he started doing a research project with the NASA Mars Rover Spirit, looking at imaging data of Mars that nobody else had studied before. Um, he picked up the necessary programming skills in the language IDL almost entirely on his own. And I know that he's come into the lab several times at weird hours just to help other students with their IDL scripts. He submitted a two-page abstract to the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference. He was the first Western student to present at this conference. And when he was there presenting his poster, several of my colleagues assumed that he was my graduate student. And they were very impressed to hear that this was his first conference, hopefully the first of many. Michael's done his senior thesis with me and decided to do his final presentation in the planetarium, also the first Western student to present a research talk in the planetarium. So in addition to his Mars science research, he's been learning the planetarium's Digistar scripting language and creating a fully immersive presentation about albedo variations on Mars. Michael will continue working with me over the summer so that he can turn his thesis work into a publication that we'll submit to the Journal of Geophysical Research. He'll be applying to graduate schools in the fall, and I have no doubts that he will succeed in a top program. Michael, you stand here with the unanimous support of the geology department, and so I want to share some of their words with you as well. Michael is an utter gem. He positively radiates joy about geophysics and planetary science. Michael is a good team player. He works well with others and is generous in sharing his ideas at this time. If character is an important part of this evaluation, then Michael definitely rises to the top. Witnessing Michael's interactions with other students, I think he is an absolutely first-rate colleague and would be deeply valued by such by any group of people. Michael, congratulations, and on behalf of the geology department, we wish you the best wherever you end up in the solar system. <laughs> Anybody else notice that the geology department described him as a gem? <laughs> okay, our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is 
Daniel Vishnikov, and Daniel is from the German department. With him is Petra Fierro, his faculty mentor. In a class of mine, the students have to talk about a skill they possess. Daniel told us about an episode that took our breath away. It happened when he was a member of a ballet troupe. In one performance during a solo, he leaped high in the air, and when he landed, he broke his foot. But the adrenaline rush was so great that he kept dancing. He did not let this blow, however, deter him from pursuing other athletic activities today. This the story illustrates Daniel's tenacity, his strong will and his determination to reach his goals. His disciplined, self-motivated and mature beyond his years. And this might have something to do with his immigrant background. Daniel is at home in three cultures and languages, Russian, American and German. When he was nine years old, his parents sought political asylum in the U.S. after the situation in their native Kyrgyzstan got a little bit out of hand. While still in high school, Daniel applied for the prestigious Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange Program and spent a whole year in Bavaria. Um, coming back with a treasure trove of very funny expressions, in the local dialect. <laughs> it's my dialect too. <laughs> um, for his junior year abroad, he returned to uh, Bavaria, honing his already tremendous language skills at the University in Munich. So you see, German is the way to go. <laughs> After watching the refugee crisis unfold, Daniel got inspired to pursue a law degree in Detroit uh, with an emphasis on immigration policies. This, coupled with his background in political science, will equip him not only with the tools necessary to find solutions for displaced people, but bring him one step closer to his ultimate goal of becoming a foreign affairs analyst. We are so very proud of you, Daniel, and wish you the very best for your future. All right, our next recipient is from the History Department. She's not here today. Her name is Caitlin Dempsey, and she is with her brother at his high school graduation. So, we are going to move on to our outstanding graduate from the Human Services Department. That is Laura Daly, and here with her is Jackie baker Sennett. Laura, you're here. It is quite a milestone, and after 150 students in our major, it's Laura who was selected as the outstanding student. Laura has come from Bremerton, Washington. She's in our distance learning student um, program, possibly the first distance learning pro program student ever to have received this award. And she has the quietest son who's ever graced this auditorium, Felix, her three-year-old, who we haven't peeped from this entire time. So uh, he has been a tremendous support. Laura is truly one of a kind. Uh, she's here to serve her beloved community of kids out. County. Everything she does is for that community. She's worked with Kids, kids Up Mental Health, she's worked with Housing Kids Up, and she started a program that's uh, gained some national traction, uh, Sober Night Out, through the library system. She's an incredible person. I just, uh, one of her, one of the anecdotes that I want to tell you is a group of students that she works with at Housing Kids Up, who uh, has been helping them with uh, hip hop, poetry, they uh, produced a spoken word CD, and one day I was in my office in the fall quarter. Now, Laura's never on campus, right, because she's in Bremerton, and I hear all these girls laughing in the hallway. And I turn around, and it's all the girls from Housing Kids App. And Laura comes in, and she says, I want you to be my professor, and I want you to know that you can have meaningful relationships 
with professors when you're in college here at Western or wherever you choose to go. And so Laura's always paying it forward, always thinking about the next generation and having a real impact, even though those of you who are on campus may not probably have met her because uh, she's been learning through distance education. So um, one thing I want to leave you with is a letter that Laura wrote to us, the faculty, when we nominated her for Outstanding Student. And it's just a little um, end piece from that letter. Quote, we are all so infinitely capable. I look forward to using my skills in education to promote positive change, provide resources for growth, and work towards social justice for all. This is really meaningful because Laura, uh, this is Laura's second time around at Western as well as uh, the accounting student there. Uh, the first time through, was uh, an ordinary experience at Western. She decided to take time off, and she's been truly extraordinary. So congratulations, Laura. All right, our next recipient from Industrial Technology and Vehicle Design is Jacob Blagg, the outstanding graduate. Here with him is Eric Leonard and Sonia. Thank you very much for this opportunity to acknowledge Jacob Legg. He's been our, he's our outstanding senior for this year, and I'm pleased to tell you that he got here because of his excellent work ethic, regularly logging more than 70 hours per week in our labs, his ability to mentor other students for several years now, his ability to support his fellow classmates in industrial design and electrical engineering and other programs in the department as he's helped them weld or fabricate their senior projects. And he's also very well respected by his employer over the last couple of years in the motorsports profession. He's already developed a reputation in that uh, marketplace. And so we're, he's very much hoping, the, his employer is very much hoping to come back and join him here uh, soon as possible. Uh, a story will acknowledge his efforts and his, um, you know, his capabilities. This past a couple weeks ago, we competed with 95 other schools from around the world in the Baja competition to build a small vehicle that races in off-road conditions at the top of the grapevine, about 4,000 feet elevation. I was thrilled to see that out of the four-hour competition, in the first hour, we moved up from 23rd position to 7th position, and I was very excited. Unfortunately, contact with another vehicle, an errant rock perhaps, took out one of our suspension members and the car became fatally wounded. However, uh, the team brought the car back to the pits and then I was a bit concerned as the faculty advisor to be realized that we had two spares for the part that was failed. Unfortunately, they were for the wrong side of the car. So I watched as Jacob carefully and efficiently swapped and re-welded the components kept them, the whole team supplying parts and working on the car, and we were able to get the vehicle back out on the track and finish the event. And not only that, instead of going to the track and then watching the vehicle, Jacob stayed behind in the pits and worked to repair another spare so that it could be used in place in case another part of the car failed. So this kind of shows his expertise and his capability. Thank you very much. Our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is from the Journalism Department, Libby Keller, and with her is her faculty mentor, John Harris. I have the pleasure of having Libby in three classes, including a feature writing class, and in that class, the students have to write a personal essay, and it has to be something they're willing to have published, and they also have to read it aloud in the class. And this is the beginning of Libby's personal essay. Till I met Adam, I never felt bad about purging. Till I met Adam, throwing up three or four times a day was no big deal. Till I met Adam, I didn't realize how painful bulimia was. My stomach would cramp and my digestion was messed up. My esophagus would be sore for hours or days. But even when the skin on the back of my throat started to thin and tear, I didn't stop. Even when I started seeing blood in my vomit, I kept going. She started choking up as she is now. And I asked her, 
I asked her, I said, do you want me to finish reading this? She's like, no, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it. And she went on and detailed in her essay, which you can read on Western's website, actually, um, her struggle with eating disorders from high school all the way up until the, the previous quarter. And when she finished, everybody just sat there in kind of stunned silence. And finally, one woman said, you know, I was working with you on the Western Front every day that quarter, and I had no idea. And Libby kind of smiled, knowing me, yeah. And another woman thanked her and said, you know, I've been struggling with eating disorders as well, and I just, to hear your story has really helped me, and it's, you know, I just really, really appreciate you doing that. So, you know, Libby was an excellent student. Um, she was a leader on the publications, clearly a great writer. But what really set her apart was her depth of character and her um, absolute bravery. And it was a privilege to teach her, and congratulations. She's also getting her award in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> Our next recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award is from Kinesiology, Casey Cottrell, and her faculty mentor is David Super. Can we get a short amount of phone for me? Um, <laughs> so it's my great pleasure to honor Casey Cottrell today. Uh, I've uh, known Casey for eight three years now, and uh, I've had her in a couple classes. She's helped me out teaching. Um, she's she's uh, worked as a peer mentor uh, for me in one of my classes, in the biomechanics class, and she's also worked as a peer mentor for uh, another class, functional anatomy in our consulting program, and in both of those instances, she got nothing in return, really. She got no credit, she's supposed to, but she didn't, and um, she just did it because she loved uh, because she loves uh, helping out. Also, uh, as many of these other students, uh, we, we've talked about their, their uh, academic performance. Casey has done an amazing job academically. She uh, had a cumulative GPA of 2.95, and uh, I'm glad my parents aren't here today because they'd be really disappointed in me. <laughs> uh, that's pretty impressive because we have a really challenging coursework in kinesiology. She was always one of the top performances in, in the classes that I taught uh, for her. Um, Casey not only works uh, diligently and, and uh, really impressively in, in, the, in the classroom, but also uh, she did a lot in the community, um, in the dance community in Bellingham um, and surrounding areas, uh, and, uh, and through that had a lot of opportunities to, to help out. So, um, she began working um, at, uh, at uh, Harper and I Dance Center in, um, in 2013, uh, and she taught ballet and tap to three-year-olds, three-year-olds and four-year-olds. Uh, I can't imagine being able to do that. <laughs> uh, as her class sizes grew, so did her opportunities to help uh, in the community uh, as an instructor, um, and this comes from uh, one of the many uh, other award that she was uh, nominated for. Uh, is it already two minutes now? Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'll just skip down to the important thing here. She is, uh, next, her next step in, in the process is to go into uh, a, a doctoral physical therapy program. She's going to be applying for uh, programs in the fall and, and in, in the summer. And um, I'm just really excited to see where Casey goes and uh, see where um, uh, where she's able to uh, influence in our, in a, not only in our field, but in, in the world around her. And the last thing I want to say is, is maybe most important, uh, Casey is awesome to talk to. Her, she, her pleasant demeanor, her great sense of humor, and uh, just the way she always smiles. It's, you know, it's impossible not to smile when you're talking to Casey. So um, I really appreciate everything I know about Casey. Thank you. So in the program, it says liberal studies is next, but they're not going to be able to be here today. So we're going to move ahead to the outstanding graduate from the linguistics department. That is Neil DeGray. And with Neil today is his faculty mentor, Jordan Sandoval.
I'm honored to have the opportunity to um, brag about the outstanding value of linguistics. Neil, dig deep. I also thought it was deep, right? Thank you. <laughs> the thing is, linguistics, I said to him, you know, I've never had the opportunity to ask your, um, how to pronounce your last name. Can you send it to me in IPA? <laughs> Um, in fact, Neil is not just an amazing linguistics student. He's also graduated from a computer science major and a math minor. In his undergraduate career, he's presented twice at Scholars Week, once in linguistics and once in computer science. And he's served our department as a linguistics club officer these past three years, the last two as club president. And, as if that weren't enough, Neil is also an honor student, whose final project this um, year was editing a novel that he wrote his sophomore year. <laughs> Neil's next steps after graduation take him to Edinburgh, Scotland, where he is going to be starting a one year master's program in informatics. In keeping with the skills and interests he's developed here at Western, he plans to focus on the intersections between human language and computer function. If you're wondering how it's possible for such a significant accomplishment in such a short time here, I'll let you in on Neil's secret. He just never sleeps. <laughs> I would wake up early to find an assignment so then get 3 a.m., only to see him a few hours later, smiling and leading class discussions. Every class with Neil was more fun. Neil has truly been a leader in our program, leading by example. In fact, his work ethic and output has become a standard that his peers aim to reach. One particularly memorable example came at the end of the quarter when a classmate, very proud of her performance on a final paper, said to me, with a known smile, I think I almost did as well as Neil on this one. And to decide, Neil is a treasure to have as a student and as a member of the linguistics program. I speak for all of the faculty when I say, we are proud to be aligned on your CV. <laughs> All right, our next outstanding graduate, Michaela Hunsaker, is from the Mathematics Department. With her today is Millie Johnson, her faculty mentor. Thank you, parents, 
for having them come to Western. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, math and music, they always seem like they go together and are complementary, even though they're opposite. So our next graduate is from music, and the outstanding graduate is Daniel Chong, and with him is faculty mentor Jeffrey Gilliam. It's an honor to speak about Danny Chong, and it's also an honor, this, this is our stage, it's weird, we're used to having a piano in front of us, and so uh, um, maybe you I hope you've had a chance to hear Danny, maybe you've heard him since being at Western at Benaroya Hall, or after winning a competition in Seattle, or if you go to the president's Christmas parties, like who's the phenomenal jazz pianist sitting in the entryway night after night, that was, that was Danny, and that kind of sums up um, the, uh, the versatility of the, and interrelatedness of his talents as a prize-winning classical concert pianist, a phenomenal jazz musician, an improviser, and, and, and uh, a, a tireless search to create a synthesis of all of these talents. I want to give you a little story, because he's going to go on uh, his concerts in the United States and in Korea uh, after he graduates, and I think he's looking for that next step, and his, he's goes, his, his inner rudder is his intuition. So he gave a senior recital last month, and uh, he thought that he was done with classical for a while. He could move on to jazz. <laughs> and, and then a few days later, five days later or something, uh, there was a, a professional pianist who was supposed to play a morning recital here in Bellingham for 200 music uh, fans, and the person canceled that morning. And they called me at 8 in the morning saying, do you have somebody who could play a memorize? One in a you know hour and fifteen minute piano recital for for an audience. <laughs> found in the practice room. Uh, he was in his Nike shoes and uh, had no time to think. I brought my jacket. He went down, just blew the place uh, away by by storm. He had to play another recital the next night. Danny, I hope this is the future of your life. Well, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave classical. I know you're not. <laughs> 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 and, uh, one last time, think about this mm. All right, Myla Becker is our next outstanding graduate, and Myla is here with us from the nursing department. Also with her is faculty mentor Christine Espina. Her master's degree in nursing after 
after she finishes with her BSN with us. Um, um, she combines her past educational work experience to bring a fresh and innovative lens to nursing and embodies the power of what a liberal arts education can contribute to the science and art of nursing practice. Congratulations, Myla. <laughs> With us next is faculty mentor Janelle Ledger and our outstanding graduate Rachel Owen, who is from the Physics and Astronomy Department. So we're going to rewind a teeny bit in the program. We're going to go back to our chemistry recipient. And the outstanding graduate recipient from the chemistry department is Natasha Seepser. Here with her is David Ryder. Her, uh, 
uh, just to note on her research, she's investigating uh, new reactions and catalytic activity at gold nanoparticles in polymer films. Um, everything she she touches turns to gold, not only because it's gold in the film, but it's going to play The faculty mentor, David, is staying with us, and we have another student to be recognized. This outstanding graduate, Andrew Hallcraft, is from Plastics and Composites Engineering. This is a good way to save time, just for that person. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay, I'm happy to introduce Andrew, uh, the Plastics and Composites Engineering uh, outstanding graduate of the year, the first of its kind. Um, you're graduating not only uh, from the program um, with, with the Master's in Plastics and Composites Engineering, but also as a BA in Chemistry. And I understand you've got a minor in Business, as well as another minor in Material Science. And you, I think you told us that you had to complete the minor in Business so that you wouldn't lose the financial backing of that scholarship. So, <laughs> it's a, a, a testament to your uh, hard work there. Um, Andrew's one of the most inquisitive and hardworking students I've known. He's been very self-motivated, um, and uh, he has a unique curiosity for connecting research. He's the type of student who likes to only run one test once, and then extract every bit of knowledge out of, out of that test to try to forecast uh, conclusions for the system and the projects. So, um, I think that's because he has that curiosity and not because he doesn't want to do any more tests. <laughs> um, Let's see, you've received numerous scholarships, so many to, to, to list. Uh, what's commendable to you is you've scholarships from two different departments, both from the chemistry department and the engineering department. Uh, so, so again, a uh, testament to your being a good citizen in both departments. Uh, so he's been uh, a published author. He's uh, recently uh, helped me uh, publish our first project on some industry-sponsored projects. Um, and that went out earlier this year. Couldn't, something that couldn't have happened without any support. Um, and let's see here, you're uh, famous, I think, not only to your colleagues in the department, but also to friends in, uh, in industry. You can draw on your, your troubleshooting, and I think you've even been sort of pulled away from what's been doing your degrees to go help out with industry related problems. So, Andrew's a problem solver, and I'm sure we're going to uh, see good things from you in the future. Congratulations. So from the Political Science Department, Heather Heffelmeyer can't be with us today. She is the outstanding graduate recipient. She is going to Baltimore to Teach for America, and she would like to thank her fellow black students and their support of her throughout her time at Western. <laughs> Present with us today, we have Danara King from the Sociology Department as an outstanding graduate, and with her is Glenn Sunakai, faculty mentor. So, Danara is a definite type of student that we wish the department had graduate programs so that we could keep you for five, six, six, seven, ten years. <laughs> <laughs> My college major is that she has a sensational taste, a thirst for learning and this high standard for academic excellence. She graduated last fall, majoring in sociology and minor in psychology, with cumulative GPA of 3.88. She was earned her cum laude honors. She was on the president's list six times in a row. This time last year, she was inducted into Alpha Kappa Delta, which is the International Sociology Honor Society. She also received the Eagle Board Paulist Scholarship for Academic Excellence. When she was in our department, she served as a teaching assistant for one of our most challenging courses, statistics, or known among our students. Uh, they call it effectively statistics. <laughs> she <laughs> served as a where I was very impressed with her abilities. We're in the process of co-opting a management together where we look at the intersection between skin tone, sexual orientation, and willingness to dating outside of the race. She has demonstrated herself to be an outstanding independent scholar as well. She analyzed over 1,500 Match.com ads where she was looking at whether or not educational achievement impacts one's willingness to get outside of their race. Like a seasoned scholar, she presented the results at the annual Pacific Sociological Association meetings 
in Oakland, California. She secured travel grant to fund the trip. But also, the faculty really believe she epitomizes Western's motto, active minds changing lives. When she was a student, she worked two years at Valley Village, and she quickly came to realize she and her coworkers were pretty much being exploited. Rather than seeing on the sidelines, she took her knowledge about social movements, organized the coworkers so they would have a collective voice to express their concerns. Where your management told me that you were a troublemaker, we'd like to think that you're an instigator for positive change. <laughs> Denara would like to attend graduate school where she will pursue a PhD in sociology, perhaps as soon as fall 2017. So on behalf of the sociology department, we are very happy about your successes and we look forward to the in the future. Congratulations. Chosen for her strong academic skills, her exceptional collaboration skills, and her interpersonal skills. She has a really high GPA like the rest of you, and she got that one A minus, <laughs> which was a bummer, and he of course isn't here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, Who did she get that A minus from? And she told me, I said, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, but one thing I noticed about her, Miss Elizabeth, she wasn't one of those students that was really eager to get an A. She wanted to know what she could do to posit positively impact students' learning. So when she's out teaching, she wants to know what can she do to improve their learning and then consequently the lives of these students. And so I always appreciated that about Elizabeth. Um, She's in an internship, um, just finished an internship now, she has three more days, and um, I got some comments from those teachers. And um, one thing about Elizabeth is with her infectious smile, she carries that with, in the classroom, and she builds strong rapport with the students, all the students, even that naughty student in the corner. They, they all want to listen to what Elizabeth has to say. She's very enthusiastic, and um, in summary, I have 30 seconds. Um, she's a thoughtful planner who is skilled at crafting instruction in a way that helps all students learn. She's our outstanding graduate. Next, from the theater department, the outstanding graduate from this year is Anna Wolfakul, and with her is faculty mentor Jim Lawrence. Anna is about lightning. She's about energy. She's about setting the world on fire. She plays characters, but she also possesses character. She's honest, fair, dependable, a role leader, a role model, one of the finest human beings I've ever come to know. She's also a consummate professional. Her story is about the actor, but the show must go on. Last summer she was in production of Urine Town. Three nights before they opened at work, she sipped on some hot oil. Spilled a lot of honor inside of a big puddle of hot oil. She said, I'm not going to give up this role. So she came the next day to rehearsal. She made it through the first act because she started to ooze, as she told me. Because <laughs> the second day, third day, she went through the first act before they opened, but she had to go to the plastic surgeon. But she did manage to open the show successfully. She wasn't going to give that role up. Um, I went with uh, Anna a couple years ago to England. And uh, we stopped in New York, and there's a picture I took of her standing at Grand Central Station. To me, I always remember her as this person. In New York, not in awe because it's New York, but in awe because she knows she's part of the fabric of this city and she's going to figure out how to live in it. Thank you for saying the world on fire, and thank you for making me a better teacher. And last but not least at all, we have with us the honors recipient of Outstanding Graduate, Maya Hansen. With her today is Scott Lindeman. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to introduce Maya Hansen to you. Um, we brought her own in case you ran out. <laughs> um, so, there's a, 
uh, I need to uh, say a few words. So the honors program here at Western um, is, is a pretty special place. And what you've heard some special clapping today because these students are clapping for each other. So about a dozen of the, of the um, outstanding graduates today are, are also honors students. And we're very proud um, of what they've been able to accomplish. And I think, as been said before, they really are the the change makers in Washington and the change makers in the U.S. and there's Maya Hansen is another example of that. So a few things about her. She's um, a graduate with a B.S. in the biology mathematics program. Uh, this is an extremely rigorous uh, combined major that uh, requires upper division coursework in biology, mathematics, chemistry, and computer science. Um, and while doing that she was able to um, still finished with a 3.99 GPA. Um, Maya was, uh, has managed to um, study abroad not once but twice in uh, India and in Thailand. She uh, was uh, chosen in a nationally competitive uh, uh, scholars program run by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Holling, she was the Holling Scholar. You can put that down, I'm the last one. I can say that. <laughs> um, for the Holling Scholar, um, she worked at uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute studying microinvertebrates from hydrothermal vents. She also did a research experience for undergraduates at Mississippi State University um, studying um, rattlesnakes. Um, let's see, she uh, has been a uh, member of the Western's Choir, if that's not enough. She's tutored at the Math Center for two and a half years. She's been a Girl Scout leader for three years and organized the first uh, Western STEM Girl Scout Day. And she is uh, happy to say that she's heading to Alaska for the summer to tromp through mosquito-infested woods uh, in, a, in work for their Wetlands, wetlands, technician. wetlands technician. So with that, uh, I congratulate my Hansen as the Western Honors Program Graduate of the Year. Wow. So I guess I'm leaving this presentation of the incredible work here today with a couple of um, final comments. One is, uh, I love that idea that mentorship is really about seeing others into being. And I really feel like what's happened today is each of you faculty who have worked with these students have seen their potential and provided the conditions that allow them to step into that even more fully. So thank you all, mentors and faculty. And then um, for the student recipients, I just think about what a dynamic, changing, adaptable moment this is and how excited I am for our future. The interconnections that you're making in the work that you're doing, the risks that you're taking, the ways in which you are performing, achieving, I'm assuming messing up in the process as well. Um, it's really, we need you. We need you to envision and create the future with us. And I think it was really inspiring to hear the ways in which you and faculty are doing that today, both leading transformed. So thank you all. Um, it was a real honor to get to witness this. And I hope you have a wonderful dinner this evening. Um, and if Anthony is still here, Anthony Valente and Libby Keller, please come down and see me because I see two additional awards and we might be able to give those to you today. So thanks so much. One more round of applause for everyone.